Welcome back, everybody. Today will be part two in the uh, AR barrel series in terms of how do you decide on what barrel you want. We went over materials before as well as different finishes. Uh, if you haven't seen that video and you're interested in that kind of stuff, go ahead and check that video out. I'll put the link here so you guys can actually click on it and check through and see how the different materials that AR barrels are commonly, uh, commonly offered in affect uh, the performance of that barrel. So you can check that link out but today we're talking about barrel length and uh, we're going to be focused on 556 five, weapons so i know there's 6.8s and 545s and 300 blackout and all that stuff and you know beowulf and all that stuff um we're not going to talk about that today we're talking about 556 five, as it is the pre uh preeminent cartridge in the ar platform at least in america at least in 2015 so um that's what we're going to be talking about here and the first thing i want to talk about is reliability because for me um, rifles can be a lot of things, but if they're not reliable, really they're, they're nothing besides a toy to me. Um, so generally speaking, this is a lot of things here will be broad generalities, guys, because there's a lot of uh, techniques and, and uh, practices that manufacturers are coming up with to overcome some of these. But generally speaking, uh, ARs that are below 10 to 10 and a half inches in terms of barrel length uh, tend to have some issues in terms of reliability. And just one way to illustrate that. And one, well, one reason for that is dwell time. So uh, dwell time, uh, for those who don't know, is is, is easy, most easily, I guess, described as the amount of time from when the bullet passes the gas uh, port in the barrel to when it exits the actual uh, end of the barrel and the uh, muzzle of the barrel and the bullet goes down range. That dwell time uh, allows for a lot of uh, different functions to happen within the rifle in terms of the cycling of the action. Um, so that dwell time is very important in terms of uh you know reliability of the weapon having consistency in that dwell time and then at least having some dwell time is good too which if you look at gas lengths of common systems uh like carbine length uh mid length and rifle length you know 14.5 16 inch and 20 inch uh generally speaking respectively that uh that dwell time or the length between the gas port and the muzzle is about seven inches give or take depending on the platform but very very close to that and the reason for that the reason it's designed like that guys is so that the dwell time is common across the platform because a lot of studies have shown that that amount of dwell time tends to lead to greater reliability so if you're ever wondering why those are are that way that's why Back to, SP, back to short barrel rifles and uh, the 10 to 10 and a half inch rifle I was talking about. So if you look at a AR-15 that's 10 and a half inches long versus one, our correction with a 10 and a half inch barrel versus one that has 11 and a half inch barrel, the difference in the overall length of the rifle is 4%. Uh, the 11 and a half is four inches long, or 4% longer overall than the 10 and a half. However, the dwell time in that barrel system is 40% greater in the 11 and a half. That's assuming we have a carbine-like gas system. Um, so that dwell time and that larger amount of dwell time leads for a lot of, uh, a lot more room for a lot of different variances that can come into your system. So generally speaking, and then when you get below 10 and a half, it obviously it gets even worse. So that's, that's sort of where, in my opinion, for reliability, generally speaking, you really don't want to go below. I know there's a lot of pistoling stuff that's happening out there and um, that's great. But what happens when you get below 10 and a half inches is you start having to adjust a lot of other systems in your rifle. So for instance, uh, companies that are making those pistol length uppers and, and stuff like that uh, with the pistol length gas system are doing a lot of things. A lot of them are uh, changing the gas port size uh, up and down, are changing their buffer weight, are changing their spring weight, are changing their bolt carrier weight, um, and, and you know, the other factors, extractor tension and stuff like that. A lot of people are really tweaking a lot of things and then only recommending certain ammo types. So the reason they do that is because the system has a lot less play in it for absolute reliability. And then if you add in, you know, lack of cleaning, maybe subpar components, a lot of things can go south quickly there. So in general, I recommend not really going below 10 and a half inches for reliability sakes and that we'll get into velocity next. When discussing velocity, one thing we need to keep in mind is that the 5.56 round is very uh, sensitive in terms of its lethality to velocity. Some rounds, generally 30 caliber rounds, tend to be much less sensitive to velocity in terms of uh, their lethality, at least out to distance. Um, but 
the 556, five, that's not the case, uh, particularly with military rounds. And I know a lot of fight folks, I should say, uh, like to use, you know, 193 or 855 or, or their variants um, for defensive use, which generally for civilians, guys, I don't really recommend that. But that's a whole other subject. A lot of people like to do that. So we'll use those sort of as the baseline here for, for this discussion. Um, Keep in mind, you can take a look at the chart right here, and you'll see the difference in, differences in um, the velocity and then the foot-pounds of energy and the barrel length that you're getting with a couple different rounds. Uh, and what you notice there is there's a pretty steep drop-off. Um, now, again, depending on what round you're using, a different level of velocity will be needed for sort of optimal lethal effects, like 193 and 855 have certain velocities that they just don't tumble uh, or, you know, uh, our fracture at so that that's very specific to those rounds now if you look at rounds like a lot of the heavier like 75 grain uh defensive rounds or some of the soft point rounds that a lot of folks recommend uh for self-defense those are the same ways a lot of soft points won't expand below a certain velocity and a lot of the the you know the 75 78 grain rounds will not and 69 grain rounds won't uh fracture or come apart and cause you know the wound tracks that you want below a certain velocity so uh for your specific ammo type that you're using for your defensive purposes take a look at your manufacturer's recommendations on that or some tests that are been done out there you know in, in ballistics gel or something like that but in general you want the more velocity sort of the better i know you certainly can get to a point that it's a uh, point of the minute exchange results like if you look at the velocity i believe it's 855 and I'll put a chart up here and see if I'm wrong. <laughs> I believe it's 855. That that round was optimized for, um, you know, 20-inch length barrels. So below 20 inches, you don't really gain anything in velocity. So, you know, do you need the 24-inch barrel? Maybe not. And it may actually be a hindrance in a lot of ways. So uh, you also have to keep in mind the velocity and the ammo that you're actually using. In general, you know, folks that are going to be using ARs for home defense, particularly short barrel rifles for home defense, are going to be not concerned about velocity beyond 50 meters. Um, most of the shots are going to be at that point. So, in general, you know, if you look at the velocity for most rounds, somewhere in the 12 to 16 inch range, 12 and a half to 16 inch range, is going to do the job pretty well you know if you want to step up to a 20 inch that's fine too but somewhere in that range depending on the different types of ammo that you're that are out there on the market and that we're using for defensive purposes um you're going to get pretty good lethality for it so um and sort of the range in my opinion you want to stay in and again by all means if you select the right ammo that 10 and a half inch sbr that you have is a very lethal weapon at you know cqb distances so i'm not saying not to use that but in general across a broader um breath if you are of, of ammo that 12 and a half to 16 inch range somewhere in there is going to give you uh more consistent velocity and more consistent wounding capabilities um with more types of ammo i get a lot of comments here on the channel and questions i get over a thousand a day and of them without a doubt every day is some comment along the lines of if i have a 20 inch ar uh, will it be more accurate than my 16 inch ar and the answer is is very likely no um the reason for that is if you think about how barrel harmonics work generally speaking again painting with a broad brush here guys generally speaking uh the shorter barrels to a point will have greater accuracy potential because there's there's less uh, whipping that's going on uh, during the cycle of that weapon and the less movement equals more consistency which equals better accuracy now again we have to go back to the velocity discussion that we just had so i'm talking about you know if you're shooting groups at, at 50 50 meters or 100 meters or whatever the case may be but once you get to the point that your velocity is dropping off to the point that your bullet's not stable or you know that wind can affect it more um then you're going to see a velocity, an accuracy difference, I should say, uh, start to lean more in the favor of the longer barrels. But in general, broad paint strokes again, guys. Uh, your shorter barrels, like you know your your 12 inch barrels or your your 14.5 inch barrels, um, at you know distances that velocity is still good, uh, will be more accurate. One day I think I'm going to do an entire video on just twist rate and ammo combination and how that stuff works for accuracy. But one thing uh, that's sort of a general overview for it is that if you're the shorter you go in your barrel, um, let's say working at a 20 inch barrel down to a 10 and a half, just for our purposes again, that we to keep it consistent. Um, generally, a, a 
bullet that will stabilize uh, well at a one and nine inch twist barrel on a, on a 20 inch AR. Um, if you make take that one same one and nine inch twist barrel and make it a ten and a half inch AR, it may not stabilize as well. Generally speaking, when you move from longer to shorter barrels, you want to increase the twist rate, which is why if you look around at the um, at the market of what you know uh, reputable manufacturers are, are offering. Very few uh, sell anything below that's below like 12 and a half inches. That's that's not either one in seven twist or one in uh, one in eight twist. And the, the reason for that is exactly what I'm saying. Generally, you want a faster twist rate because it has less time to travel in the barrel, and you want to Im uh, impart that gyroscopic stability on the bullet. That stability of the rotation of the bullet is going to keep it stable um, as it travels downrange to the target. So, in the short of the barrel, generally you want that twist rate to be faster. And something that, uh, if for you AK guys out there, you'll, you'll probably understand this better than folks who are more, more into the AR, with at least those who haven't researched it, um, is if you take a look at the crank off platform in AKs, right? Did generally your AK 74s are going to be somewhere in the 1 to 7 to 1 to 9 uh, twist rate give or take, it depends on the platform. In the, in the shorter barreled uh, crank offs, they're almost all one in six or one in seven and a half, somewhere, somewhere in that range, depending on the country of origin. And for the exact same reason, there's no difference there and that's, that's why. So uh, if that helps it make sense, maybe it, that's what helps. So what are some of the advantages to shorter and longer barrels uh, over what we just talked about? So generally speaking, with shorter barrels, you're going to have more blast, you're going to have more flash, you're going to have more concussion, and uh, and you're also going to have more wear on suppressors if you guys use suppressors out there. So that same you know rifle that you have that's a 14 and a half inch pinned A2 uh, that you shoot, if you take that same barrel and... Uh, you know, same manufacturer specs, same system, same everything, and take it down to 10 and a half, it's going to be louder. Your flash hider is not going to be quite as effective, and people standing around you are going to be a little bit more annoyed by the blast coming out of it. So um, that's just some of the disadvantages of it, as well as the increased wear, like I said, if you're using suppressors. And, the, and for the same reasons, you're having more pressure coming out at the end, as well as, you know, some unspent gas, or un unburnt powder, I should say. So those are some of the disadvantages. And then, you know, for going for a longer barrel, you're going to get the exact opposite in terms of advantages, less flash, less blast, all that stuff. So uh, that's also another factor you want to consider when determining which barrel length you should get. From reading the comments over the years, one thing I know is sometimes you guys just want an answer. Like, what barrel should I get? What barrel is best for me? The answer is, I don't know. One thing you all... I absolutely have to keep in mind, at least for my American viewers out there, is that in America, your barrel needs to be an overall length of 16 inches, uh, unless you want to either uh, use a pistol loader with, you know, like a pistol brace or something like that, or pistol buffer tube, or if you want to uh, go the SBR route and, and start dealing with the uh, short barrel rifles and the NFA laws. So that's one factor that most folks need to keep in mind right there. Just that above all else is legality. We want to stay legal. Um, and then beyond that, it totally depends on your usage, guys. If you're somebody who wants to use your AR as your primary home defense tool and you want, you know, you have kids that are three hallways over and two flights of stairs down that you may have to go get in the event of an emergency, well, maybe, you know, a 10 and a half inch barrel with a suppressor on there, you know, may be a good option for you. And, and in that situation with the right ammo, it can be very effective. But, you know, if you're somebody who lives in a banned state that can't have those things, and uh, you know you want to use your AR for home defense. Well, probably you're going to have to go with a 16 and a half, 16 inch barrel. It's just the way it is. If you're somebody who wants to uh, do very long range shooting, you're probably going to go want to go with a longer barrel as well to get that stability out at distance. Um, it really just depends, guys. But I hope I answered some questions in this video. I tried to without rambling too too much. Um, there will be other videos in this series because really I get so many questions about AR barrels, materials, twist rates. Gas systems, we'll probably cover gas systems in another video as well. Um, buffer weights, all that stuff. I want to, you know, keep making these videos and hopefully they're not boring everyone to death and try to answer those questions, guys, to get good information out there that's that's hopefully hopefully good information anyway and quality information that you guys can use. Um, if you guys have any questions that I didn't cover about this in terms of either barrel length or the materials like I did in my earlier videos, by all means, let me know. The other questions that you guys have, uh, 
post them below in the comment section as well. So that way I'll know which way to gear uh, this series and what videos to sort of prioritize to answer the most questions. But thanks as always for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. You can post those questions either below in the comment section. You can also post them over at my Facebook page as always. But uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next video.